Hello, welcome to my latest video. I thought I'd um, paint on Payne's Grey, use that as an underpainting, and uh, you can actually see the ghost of a landscape on there. It's a, it's a painting I'd already done, and I could no longer live with it, so I thought I'd uh, paint over it. So I might get it x rayed one day and uh, see what's underneath it. But um, yeah, I thought I'd paint a bit of a childhood memory. I always paint memories and from the imagination. I can, I've never copy anything. I've tried. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to paint on Payne's Grey as the uh, base, if you like. This is uh, just a small one. It's about 12 by 8 inches, something like that. And uh, we'll see what we can do. Start waving my hairy stick about. So uh, just start with a horizon without much thought at all at this stage. Got my headphones in, listening to music as always. Oh, a bit of a hill there already. But uh, it's academic as I'll be going over that in a minute with the sky. Yeah, the childhood memory, it uh, comes from uh, probably early 80s, well right through the 80s, um, we used to, when we lived in uh, Derbyshire, we used to travel to my auntie Shirley's who lives in Hanforth, and she still lives there now, and um, Oh, you know, that, that sky is looking quite interesting already with the uh, Payne's Grey underpainting. Yeah, it's quite effective. I'm quite pleased already. Anyway, we, we used to travel to Mount Shirley's and uh, whenever we were driving back, there's uh, a windy road um, not far from Macclesfield. Um where the snooker player Alex Higgins used to live he used to go past his house and you go under a railway bridge and it comes to a junction now back then I mean it's got lights on the junction now there were no lights back then but um, we, we used to me and my brother me in particular used to get really excited going under the bridge because more often than not you get a big uh, train, you know, one of the old diesels chugging along the railway line. And you reach the junction, and nowadays you, you turn right at the junction and you go past the Butley Ash pub at Butley Village. If you went left, you'd end up in Pointon. So we always went right towards Macclesfield. And every time we went and came back from Auntie Shirley's, I'd be sat in the car and uh, look out the window and you could see distant hills. Not too dissimilar to what I'm going to paint. And on top of uh, one of those hills was always a, a white speck a white smudge if you like in the distance and uh, one time I'd, I asked my mum what it was I said oh that's uh, white Nancy which is you know, a good distance away from where the junction was at Potshrigley near there and Bollington and all that sort of thing and uh, yeah, she said that's White Nancy, and she said it, it's named after a racehorse called White Nancy. I thought, oh, well, that's interesting. But anyway, I sat on this memory for a long, 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 long time until just over a year ago. I painted it, and um, you know, painted the hill and 
put White Nancy on it, just how I remembered it from back then. And, um, you know, the upshot is, you know, um, my mum bought it off me, and it's on a, on a dining room wall. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it was a childhood memory imprinted on my mind. But anyway, I uh, read up on White Nancy after I painted it, just to find out more about this uh, racehorse. So, um, yeah, you put in Google, White Nancy racehorse, nothing came up. And uh, so I put in White Nancy. And there's lots about White Nancy near Bollington. And... Um, it was actually, it was built to commemorate the Battle of Waterloo in 1817 by a chap called John Gaskell, who lived nearby in Ingersley Hall. So he was obviously quite wealthy. And so he, uh, yeah, he built White Nancy as uh, a folly, if you like, which was all the rage back then. You'd build a folly on your land, and uh, it was a bit like a summer house, you know, you're sitting there with all your finery. And, um, yeah, it was, it, it, nowadays you go up to, I've only been up to it once, but it, it is huge, it's enormous. But um, there's no sign of it being a folly, because you expect a folly to have a door in it and a window and all that sort of thing. But this, this hasn't got... Um, a door, and it's painted regularly. You know, it sticks out like a sore thumb. You know, it's uh, whitewashed quite often. But anyway, um, it used to have a door, but at some point it was sealed, and um, apparently it's it's still got a round table inside it, with uh, the benches, you know, stone seating around the inside of it apparently it's still there but uh, obviously the door's bricked up and um, I then found out the actual story behind the name and uh, um, the local soldiers who were based there during uh, World War Two were from the Royal Signal Corps and they carried out signals, trials, and radio direction finding, and heaven knows what else up there. And, um, yeah, the White Nancy, um, apparently it's, it's come down through oral tradition, that uh, it was the name of the horse that pulled the stone up, to the hill to build the monument that was the name of the lead horse so uh, yeah an incredible story to it and uh, yeah back in my days when I used to be in mountain rescue and I was ultra fit I uh, did go up there and it's quite a trek but once you go up there oh it's a heck of a place yeah it's a really special place so it holds an, you know important place in my heart and you know many years ago when mum was younger when she was growing up she went up there as well and uh, the views are just spectacular so yeah th this is basically the view from the junction at the Butley Ash as I see it, anyway, it's not exact. It's just uh, from the imagination, as I say. But yeah, you know, if you've ever been up to White Nancy, you'll know what I mean. It's hard to track up there. And heaven knows how they got all the stone up. Because it's, uh, it's decent size. It really is. I'd have to quickly... Uh, Look up the dimensions, see if I can find out how big the thing is. Bear with me. 
add a few highlights into that foreground. Yeah, it's coming on nice. It's worked really well actually. Uh, having a Payne's Grey underpainting that is kind of lifted the tones quite nicely. And I believe there's actually a flower called White Nancy as well. Yeah, I, oh, I can't find the dimensions of the thing. No. Oh well. I might find the size, but yeah, it is. It's uh, it's an enormous thing, and you can well imagine a door inside. You know, on the side of it and uh, stuff inside. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. Here, the hill it's on is called Carriage Hill. It's quite a nice name. details going on now that um, on the left hand side there's that rocky feature that's purely imaginary it could easily be Stanage or the roaches somewhere around there when I paint for me imagination it's normally a a mixture of places in one painting I just plonk white Nancy on with my fine brush Oh, I haven't got very steady hands at all because of essential tremor. Oh, it looks a bit big actually. Might get rid of that. Yeah, too big. But I easily get rid of it. <coughs> it's beauty about painting. Doesn't matter if you make a mistake, just go over it. Yeah, I'm on uh Yeah, oh you know, it's about oh let's have a look, it says here on uh, Wikipedia. Structure da, da, da. Yeah, it's about, about twenty foot high. So it's a decent height. <coughs> Yeah, it's built of sandstone rubble, which has been rendered and painted white. And it says here, until 1925, it wasn't white at all. It's been painted uh, a number of different colours over the years. Oh, in... <laughs> 2005 it says someone painted it pink as a prank. <laughs> Let's have another attempt at uh, doing white Nancy again with my shaky hands. Oh that's more like it. I'm a bit happier now with the scale. Much happier now. Didn't look too, it doesn't look as big and clumsy as it did. Yeah I'm really pleased with that actually. It's turned out really well. Yeah, a few finishing touches. I've got that feeling that uh, we're just about done. Painted Alapima, as always, nice and fast. That first attempt. The quicker paintings tend to be my, be my best. So thank you so much for watching. It means a lot. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.